All right, here we go. We're heading out for another adventure. It's gray, it's gloomy. I'm still not sure about the van. I don't know if I'm ready. And weirdly, it feels so casual. But the thing is, if you wait till everything's perfect and if you wait until everything feels right, and feels epic before you do something, nothing will ever get done. The only way to have an adventure is to get out the door and have one. So that's what we're doing. Before we talk about it more, let's get the heck out of Southern California. Uh, out and up and over the hill. We've made it to Barstow, California, and therefore, we're back on old Route 66. This place over here, Barstow Station, is an old Harvey house back from even before the old Route 66 automotive era when rail travel was the order of the day and the sumptuous Harvey houses provided rest, relaxation, and restaurants for the railroad travelers. Now don't get the wrong idea, this isn't going to be a Route 66 trip in that we're not going from LA to Chicago and then back to LA. In fact, my initial plan was to try to avoid traveling too much on Route 66 both because we've done an epic back and forth road trip on Route 66 before and because I very much plan on doing it again, possibly even later on this year. We'll see. But my initial preferred route, which would have been to head way up north, has been cut off by bad weather. And so for at least a little while, Route 66 it is. And you know what? I'm never gonna complain about having to travel down the old mother road. Six years ago, I left Southern California, left from the beach, crossed the entire continent to the East Coast and then came all the way back on an epic trip with absolutely no specific destination in mind other than at some point I wanted to go see my friend Tyler in Georgia and that's pretty much what we're doing now. I am leaving Southern California with no specific destination in mind and no particular agenda ahead of us, except at some point I want to link up with my uncle in Pennsylvania who's been battling cancer with both fists. And we're gonna at least attempt to do it all in the van. This rattly old rust bucket is still relatively untested. So for all I know today, our first day could be our last day of the trip. But that just adds to the interesting and very random nature of the adventure. Two days ago as I filmed this was Allie's birthday and she had a big party and then the aftermath meant that I'm leaving a day late. So today I'm mostly just jetting out of here as fast as I can. It's already kind of late in the afternoon for being just in Barstow. But like any good freight train, the farther we get from the station, the more steam we're gonna pick up. So let's get behind the wheel and get out of here. Oh man, getting across California going east instead of going north to Las Vegas. Takes a lot longer than I think every time, and I can't even count the number of times I've had to do it. Look at this majestic desert. Boring! Ugh, I gotta stretch the old legs. I'm still not even out of California. Ugh, the good old John Wilkie rest area. I have no idea who John Wilkie was. I knew a Brian Wilkie once. I used to call him Wilkie Wonka. There's still so many barely touched mid-century rest stops in California. I appreciate the aesthetics, but you'd think they could update the hardware in there. Ugh. Oh, I should have drank some coffee today. People always ask me how much I plan these things out, right? Like how do I book hotels in advance and all that stuff? I cannot overemphasize how little planned out these are. Pre-book? Where's the fun in that? Boy, does this thing get terrible gas mileage. Not only that, but the uh, high top on it. Holy cow, it's like a sail. It's windy out here. Getting blown all over the road, but there is good news. We've reached the Colorado River, and that means we've just passed in to Arizona. Oh, it feels good to be back. Especially because hopefully over on this side of the border, we'll find less expensive fuel. Oh yeah, man, I filled up this morning for $5.99. So this is more than a dollar cheaper. Not that that makes me feel great about paying $4.49 per gallon. Uh, I bought a very fuel inefficient vehicle at the worst possible time. Because I'm a moron. Although I'll have you know, because of some way this uh, van was built with the extra stuff underneath, that it's actually technically a clean air vehicle. I'm allowed to use the carpool lanes. Weird. Oh boy, this trip is going to be a fun one. Man, when I was 22, 23, on tour, blah, in the band, 
I could drive for so long, just days at a time. Sadly, that is just no longer the case, but it does mean that even when I'm trying to hurry, we have extra excuses to stop. <sighs> Kingman, Arizona. And the old powerhouse. Normally one of my must stops to use the restrooms primarily, but of course it's a little too late in the day for that, so like Sting, I'll have to send my message in a bottle, if you know what I mean. The last time I stopped here and checked in at the old powerhouse, I came to check out this epic new sign they had just built for the Kingman Visitor Center. Of course, a throwback to the old days of neon signs at every hotel and bar and gas station and of course museum and gift shop. That trip was cut short because my fiance Allie back home was starting to get too sick uh, before her surgery to be left alone so I had to cruise back real quick and as a result didn't get to see the finished product of their next addition to the Kingman Visitor Center. This thing, the Route 66 Kingman Archway. It is absolutely enormous and of course instantly iconic just since I've been here. I've been seeing family after family cruising through the sign in their car for a fun pick. As gargantuan as the sign is though, I'm not sure it's big enough for me to get the van through. Clearance says 8 feet. I have no idea how tall the van is, but hey, as long as I'm stopping here to stretch my legs anyways, I might as well find out. Alright, here goes nothing. Coming up to the first test, which is the eight foot sign. I'm gonna pull underneath it. Any scraping? Nope, it actually looks pretty good. You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. Here goes nothing, my friends. Here goes nothing. All right, we're gonna whip around the circle here. Get closer to the sign. I'm gonna center ourselves and then gently, gently, mm -hmm. Well, the nose is through. Ho, 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 ho. Yes! Yes! Huzzah! We made it! We didn't break the Route 66 Kingman sign. <laughs> I just, I just now realized that if we were too big, we would have broken it. Oh, boy. Now it's time with the help of this handy dandy metal thing to get the ultimate sick pick. All right, here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ooh, weird. I hope it came out good. Gotta send something to my grandma. That is awesome. Plus, I now know that the van is not quite eight feet tall. Well, it looks like I'm hogging up all the Route 66 sign to myself. Time to let other people enjoy. Ah, as happy as I am to be able to stop in Kingman on my way through town. I gotta admit, it's a little sad because back in the day, one certain she would have said fan, I would have said friend, would always manage to find me whenever I came through here and come down and say hello, and that was Jenna Evans, who sadly passed away. So I'm gonna always make it a point to come sit on the little bench here and just take a little minute to remember my friend. You know, people are always telling me how much they enjoy these silly episodes and how big of an impact I've made on them over the years. So I would just like to say they, meaning you, have made a much bigger impact on me. So I'd like to thank all of you, particularly those of you who've subscribed and have followed along on all these adventures, and those people on Instagram and Patreon and everywhere else that leave such kind comments. You've made a huge impact on my life for the better. Feels good to be cruising old Route 66. Again, the main street of America. I wish we could stop for the night in Kingman and spend the night in the old El Trovatore over there. Or maybe the hilltop where we haven't had a chance to stay yet. But for the sake of time, I think we're gonna try to push on as long as I have a little daylight left. Huh. You know, I don't think I've ever been out on this part of the road at this time of day. Which is apparently a shame because look how gorgeous the Hackberry General Store looks in the sunset. Normally by this time of night, I'm looking for somewhere to bed down and that means I'm usually through here already. I can't tell you how many towns and places I had a very poor opinion of back in the band years when I used to tour because we were always aiming to be at places at night for the shows that we would play at night 
and then leave the venue in the middle of the night and drive through the town at night back to the freeway at night. Usually also, by the way, in the worst possible neighborhood, all the punk rock venues, you know, located in the cheapest real estate kind of thing. And then I would go back through filming videos for random land traveling by day and find out that a lot of these places were simply delightful. Turns out that all the old timers we would see when we were out on the road, the people in their RVs, you know, the retirees and snowbirds who would only travel by day and then turn in around this time, they knew something I didn't. Because as much as I like being a night owl and as fun as it was driving through the night all night, drinking Mountain Dew and getting wild listening to the radio, turns out that travel by day is a lot safer and, strangely, a lot more romantic. Having said that though, I don't think there's anything more romantic than golden hour in the West. Just look at this. Ah, good old Hackberry. To see this place, you have to be on old Route 66. You gotta get away from the interstate and drive down that long forgotten section that inspired the Disney Pixar movie Cars. It's slower, it takes a little bit more time, but it only takes a little bit more time. Traveling the interstate only saves you about 23 minutes at this time of day when there's so little traffic. And obviously that doesn't count stopping to talk to you for a while and take in the sunset, but still 23 minutes? Come on, the stop is totally worth it. Oh man, look how much this sign has faded. I hope they restore it soon. This was painted by Bob Waldmeyer, an artist who actually lived at the Hackberry General Store for a while, but is a famous Route 66 artist. And this is one of his Legendary signs. Definitely recognizable the way he'd always do the 66 and do that shield right there. You can see the side away from the sun hasn't faded nearly as bad. It's gorgeous out here. But all right, I guess I gotta be moving on. One thing certainly I don't think could ever be tainted for me is the romance of the American road. You hear that? Freight train rolling by down in the distance. Smells wonderful out here. Nice, fresh, clean air. Look at that sunset. It's absolutely gorgeous out here, my friends. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, all right. I gotta drag myself away now. It's hard though. Look how good it looks out here. And time to flick the headlights on, I guess, because that sun is going down. Boy, they got some long trains out here and even longer sunsets. It took a long time for the sun to go down, and then an even longer time to get to town. Finally, my friends, I see lights on the horizon. We're back. In Seligman, Arizona, the birthplace of historic Route 66. I must tell you, by this time of night, I thought I'd be a lot farther along down the old dusty trail headed east. Sad to report, and although I'd like to keep driving through the night, I am just out of steam, so I think we may be at the end of our road for the day. Oh, this is great. I just happened to be driving by and notice this said vacancy up here at what is now the Deluxe Inn Motel. I've stayed here before. It was a very pleasant experience. There's actually a couple of nice motels in town with even more impressive neon signs. Some I've stayed at, some I haven't, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the Deluxe Inn, particularly because of its location, but we'll get to that in a second after the guy gets here to check us in. It's not just me. There's another carload of people waiting to check in as well. We had to call the phone number for a guy to come over to the hotel. I think he's actually walking over. That is, unless we can check in with this horse, can we? Of course, of course you can't check in with the horse. Oh, awesome. Okay, the dude got here, got all checked in. Now we just gotta pull up to the room. I'm a little bit scared to open the door now, and I'll tell you why in just one second. Hello? Anybody in here? The switch doesn't work, scary. Nobody jump out, okay. Oh my gosh, that switch doesn't work either. Help. Oh, oh, okay. Whoo! Nobody here but us. Dude, look at this. Isn't this place amazing? It doesn't get much more old school than this. This is the first time I've ever stayed in a proper room here. Look at the extra bed and this little cubby hole of a room back here. This is so weird. Anyway, that's because I haven't stayed in a normal room here because the room I stayed in used to be a garage for one of these rooms and it's since been converted. This place was built 
in the 1930s, I think 1932. So it dates all the way back to the old auto court days. It's built of rock and old plaster. It's a pretty ancient little motel. And like a lot of other old motor court motels, very well, oh, watch the step. In the very earliest years, it would have had a garage at next door, which is now number three. See how skinny that room is there? Whereas my room is nice and wide with a big window. That's because that would have been a garage under this lintel right here would have been the garage door for this room. I could be wrong, but I think I stayed in number three before. Anyway, real quick, I'm going to grab some of my belongings and then maybe walk around town just a little bit before hitting the sack. Oh yeah, and I got to tell you why I was scared to open the door. Just grab some of my stuff real quick. I got to admit, I somewhat overpacked for this trip. Or maybe it's more accurate to say my bags seem a little over full right now because, like I said, there is just... No plan whatsoever. On the one hand, if things go wrong with the vehicle, particularly, we could be going home tomorrow. And then on the other hand, I could be out for a whole month. So I had to pack pretty much everything in the kitchen sink in terms of clothes. Because you never know where you're going to find a friendly washing machine. And I, it's kind of annoying to carry a month's worth of clothes around with you just to pop into a hotel here and there. So I'm probably going to have to split this up into multiple bags. None of this is interesting. Why am I telling you this? All right, it doesn't matter how nice the place is, always check for bed bugs, no matter what. I was literally at a very fancy hotel with some very fancy people in Paris, France, and found bed bugs. Good thing I always check. Made them move me all the way across the hotel to another suite, and I, I checked every inch of that place. Didn't end up sleeping the whole night. The crazy thing is, once you've seen bed bugs once, you know what to look for, you know what they look like, you'll see them every time. You know, you'll never be fooled again. I'm very happy to report that that bed is very bed bug free, so that's probably where I'm gonna be bedding down for the night. I don't think I can handle the the ghost cubby. The ghost cubby seems a little, a little too small for me. Maybe I'll close. Close the curtain there. No, that's worse. I'm just gonna leave that. I'll leave that open. Let me see if it's clear now out here. Okay, all clear. So what happened was that uh, there was a couple ladies waiting to check in while I was waiting to check in. So one of them, she checks in and gets the key for I think number six, and then she leaves and I'm checking in, whatever. And she comes back in a few minutes later, right after I got given my key, and she goes, "Oh, I tried number six, number six, right?" And she goes. Uh, there's somebody in there. And the guy's like, what? What do you mean? And she's like, yeah, they opened the door. And they said, maybe it must be number nine. But look at it. It's, it's the right side up. It's number six or whatever. And so he looked so confused. So apparently those people went into the wrong room. And it wasn't supposed to be occupied. They were in a... So it was a whole little fiasco. And it was like mildly humorous. Nobody was upset. They were outside the two rooms talking to each other afterwards. Like, oh, you know, misunderstanding. Sorry about that. And the front desk goes, oh, sorry. Misunderstanding. Some kind of mix-up. Oh, but dude, that is my nightmare. Every hotel I go to where the windows are closed, I can't see into the room before I get in it. I'm like, oh, what if someone's in there? I'm always so scared of that happening. Particularly when I check in at night, you know, I'm like, oh, what if, what if someone did, what do I do? What, what, what would I even do? So I was a little nervous. Anyway, oh, look at that. It's the Duke. I'm going to go take a walk for a couple minutes and uh, eat some food and motel and sleep well. Uh, I remember now. The original name of this place was the Court Deluxe because it was a motor court. You can see back in the old 1930s and 40s postcards, you can see the garages there. It doesn't look that much different today other than that. It's funny because it's no longer the Court Deluxe. Now it's the Deluxe Inn, so it is sort of the original name. And the reason I personally like this motel so much is because it's in really easy walking distance. And I mean almost literally next door to Angel's Barbershop, better known today as Angel and Vilma's Route 66 gift shop, the home of Angel Delgadillo and family. And Angel, of course, is the one who spearheaded the movement to restore Route 66 by introducing historic highway Route 66. And if you really don't know who Angel is, you should probably watch my Route 66 coast to, well, not coast to coast. <laughs> it only goes from LA to Chicago, but end to end and back series. It's one of the few things I actually have a playlist for, so go ahead and check that out. Because if you're interested in the highways and byways of America at all on any level, I think you'll really enjoy it. Even when I'm just passing through, I like stopping here at any time of the day sitting on one of these benches here and just absorbing that 
small town Route 66 feeling. But before I go in and eat my grub and lay my head down to bed, since I can see it lit up down there, let's go take a stroll and check out one of the fabulous remaining neon signs in town down at the Supai Motel, which I've also stayed at, but not for like six years. I think I'm actually due. On the way, check it out. Look at the neon on the rusty bolt. Heck yeah. Awesome. And the Motel Canyon Lodge over there. Ringed with red neon, looking pretty swell. Pretty swanky. This one I've never actually stayed in. It looks a lot more 1950s, much more modern, relatively speaking, than our accommodations for the night. I've always wanted to stay here. Keep forgetting about it. I probably should have. I, I saw the vacancy sign down there at the deluxe. And I got so excited I didn't even look at the Motel Canyon Lodge vacancy sign. Oh well, that's why you gotta keep coming back and back and back. Look at that, the old copper cart, all peaceful and quiet at night. And also strangely peaceful and quiet. The Black Cat Bar. I've seen this place getting hecka rowdy in the daytime, and here I am at night. Nothing going on. Nice and peaceful looking in there. I never actually stepped inside one of these days. I probably will, but not while I'm alone, you know. All right, here we go. We're gonna pass the Romney Motel, which sadly doesn't have any more neon. They do have some rope lights back there. It's another classic I have yet to stay in. And then finally, we're here. Dude, just look at that epic old school neon sign with the flashing bulbs. I can actually hear them. If I hold still, I can hear the clicking of those bulbs going on and off. As you've seen, not too many people wander around this town at night, which is a shame because otherwise this would be definitely better known as a classic neon sign of the Mother Road. The hotel's not bad either. I've stayed here and like I said, I think my friend Adam the Woo has stayed here several times too. It's a great place to stay. It's not in the cards tonight. So I'm headed back to the deluxe for some grub and for some rub-a-dub-dub go to sleep in the tub. Oh yeah man, how epic was that neon sign? That was definitely worth crossing the street for. Speaking of crossing the street, look at that cat. It wouldn't let me pet it. I wanted to pet it so bad. All right. I gotta knock it off and go eat, or else we'll never have a video tomorrow. I'll just have to sleep all day. All right, time to uh, commence to eating, and then editing, and then finally, my friends, motel and sleep well. Thanks for watching the random chaos of beginning this trip. Remember, we got store.randomland.com. We've got Patreon with morning announcements for the Adventurers Club tier. It's a separate series of videos, and of course, we'll be back for more adventures. But for now, you've done your duty. You can go home and sleep well. And y'all had a fun adventure, right? So why not go over to store.randomland.com and when you're done, y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> okay.